Clive James, welcome to BBC Breakfast. It's a pleasure. Can I just say from the outset, I, I genuinely didn't know what to expect of you today. Well, I can see I've been in one of those gunfights that often happen in MI5 when there's a demarcation dispute. But uh, I survived it. And the truth is, I'm surviving everything. I'm not supposed to. Old as the hills and riddled with ill health. I talk the talk, but cannot walk the walk, save at the pace of drying paint. My wealth of stamina is spent. You are in an unusual situation, as you well know, which is, what, two years ago now, a lot of people thought you were about to die. You almost have the, the rare the rare chance to, to see what people really think of you, even though you're not dead. It was great stuff. And the grim truth is that I did die. And it's my ghost that's talking to you now. And I can't pull the same stunt twice. You see the problem? Clive, I'd like to ask you about the issue of talking about death, whether that's how you talk about it to your loved ones, or I guess in your case, you're talking about it in your work as well. How, how easy or difficult has that been for you? With my loved ones, I just try to be entertaining and funny. And, and I always did. In my work, and especially in my poems, I'm being as serious as I can about it. It doesn't seem to me to be a forbidden subject. Uh, it's a good subject. It's going to happen to everyone, for example. It really is universal, more so than love. Once or twice uh, during my career, I've interviewed people who are effectively expecting to die. And a couple of times they have talked about how uh, a sort of clarity emerges at that time. I, can, I actually feel the same. I feel there's a, a new clarity, a new sanity, perhaps. But there needed to be, because when I was young and had lots of energy, I was a real bundle of energy, I did everything wrong. And now there's necessarily, I have to sit back and contemplate and there's, and there's time to think. And I do think, see things more clearly. I have to say, overwhelmingly, in the new poetry, there is a sense of looking back and talking about, reflecting on mistakes, uh, things you might have done differently. Uh, that is a very clear theme in the yes. work. Well, I think we, the mistakes are the only things we learn from anyway. Nobody learns anything from success. But for your failures, uh, they're, they're a real subject. But yes, there's a lot of regret and remorse in the book. I'm going to read this, uh, and it's a little bit embarrassing me reading your poetry, but do, if I you don't mind. I love the idea. Yeah. Uh, Le, Saint, Le Saint de Tenebre is, uh -huh. is the poem I was going to choose. <laughs> but are they lessons, all these things I learn, through being so far gone in my decline? The wages of experience I earn would service well a younger life than mine. I should have been more kind. It is my fate to find this out, but find it out too late. First, let me say you read that very well. Uh, you read much better than most actors do. And it was gratifying to hear it. And I'm almost convinced that was, I said that. I think it's largely true. And uh, I wish I'd been wiser earlier. Uh, but now that I am necessarily uh, being as wise and comprehending as I can be about my life, uh, I've got something to go on, something to be grateful for. It goes on. Far too casually, I broke faith when it suited me, and here I am alone, and now the end is near. I'm saying that I was a bad husband. It's true, I was. And it's part of my subject. And I mustn't be too facile about it, or actually talk too much, because I, I have a pact with my family that they'll execute me if I do. But yes, I could have behaved a lot better. And sorry, I didn't. There's another poem I'd like to read one passage from. Can I do that for you? This is Spring Snow Dancer. Ah. My granddaughter, as quick as I could glance, did ballet steps across the kitchen floor. And this time I was breathless at the chance by which I'd live to see our dear lamb dance, though soon I will not see her anymore. You do read well, and I'm particularly pleased with the poems that have my granddaughter in them. She's at the centre of all our lives, 
and I love writing about her. She's only 10. She's a ball of energy and dancing and singing. And I've just loved it when she's turned up in my poems. I don't know when she will. She comes and goes like Tinkerbell, and a quality I try to get when I write about her. But uh, thank you for reading that out. There was a moment, was there? You, you, were, you were sitting and you watched something unfold and you're yeah. thinking, how many more times will I have this chance? I, I was thinking that and I was also thinking I could have been long ago a better family man than I was. Uh, I'm better now. People will tell from the way you talk, even about those hardest things, that the funny, the Clive James funny, has not gone away. I've always thought humour was a means of information anyway. I don't like jokes just for their own sake. I like the jokes that convey a truth. Japanese maple. Your death, near now, is of an easy sort. So slow a fading out brings no real pain. Breath growing short is just uncomfortable. You feel the drain of energy, but thought and sight remain. I'm curious to know, what are those highs and, and lows right now? Well, my thing has always been to enjoy everything. That's my shtick. You know, I enjoy pop songs, jazz, classical music, literature, bad books, good books. I mean, I've still got that. And uh, I still get a big bang out of, say, watching Game of Thrones. But I get my biggest kick out of writing something. When people are facing serious illness, their thoughts can often move to the, to the bigger questions. There are no bigger questions. Life itself is the mystery, and everything that happens within life is, is, is the real subject. And I think there's nothing beyond that. And I don't think that will condemn, condemn me to hell to say so. There is no hell, not beyond, and no heaven either. It's all here. Clive James, we wish you well, and who knows, maybe we'll talk again in a year's time. Next year, yes. Yeah. <laughs>